Good afternoon, and thank you to everyone for having me here today. I'm particularly grateful to uh, Ramiro Cavazos, uh, President of the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, uh, Chairwoman Alice Rodriguez, and the USHCC co-chairs Nelson Reneri and Jackie Puente. I'm particularly grateful to President Biden and SBA Administrator Isabella Guzman for this opportunity to serve my country and to support small Latino and minority-owned businesses to gain access to opportunity and the federal government as a partner, a business partner. On February 16th, President Biden and Isabella Guzman appointed me to serve as the Associate Administrator for Government Contracting and Business Development at the U.S. Small Business Administration. I am the first Latina to serve in this position, which oversees small and socioeconomic business certifications that includes the 8A program, the Women-Owned Small Business Program, the Hub Zone Program, and soon the Service Disabled Veteran Business Certification Program. We also, in my office, oversee the small business goaling process for all 24 cabinet agencies. And we report on an annual basis how each of the agencies performed on these congressional mandated small business goals. I'd like to share with you a moment before we start the workshop about my family's personal experience over this last year. USHCC President Carrasco said that Latinos are three times more likely to test positive for the coronavirus. On March 2, 2020, my family received the most tragic news in our lifetime. But first, let me go back to 2008. One day, my little brother, Patrick Hidalgo, called me up from our hometown of Miami, Florida, and said he had extraordinary news to share. The president, the presidential campaign of Barack Obama and Joe Biden hired him to be the Hispanic vote director of Florida. I couldn't have been more proud of him. After the election, my little brother insisted that I join the administration. He wouldn't take no for an answer. I joined in 2009, and shortly thereafter, I was asked to work at the White House to lead our strategy on ensuring that the administration met the 23% Congressional Small Business Goal, and that minority-owned businesses gained significant opportunity in, par in partnering with the federal government. After an intensive effort in which we focused on driving demand among the more than 3,000 buying offices across the U.S. federal government to meet the 23% overall small business goal, the government hit the target for the first time in nearly a decade. My little brother Patrick and I worked in the White House, and then we started our own company advising major corporations on their small and minority business strategy. Again, we focused on driving demand. For six years, we pounded the pavement, building and growing our social impact firm. And then the biggest pandemic hit for the first time in over a century. On March 2, 2020, I lost my brother, business partner, and best friend, Patrick Hidalgo who had a pre-existing condition. We buried him at the age of 41. We were five children, five children and my three siblings and I have been deeply de devastated. But when President Biden was elected president of the United States, his leadership team wouldn't take no for an answer when I said, I don't know if I'm ready after all we've been through. And when he nominated SBA Administrator Isabella Guzman to lead the agency, she called me as she was on her way back after spending a moment with the president in Delaware. And she said, will you join my team and lead us on government contracting? And then after the senior appointment economics team said to me, Bibi, the president is no stranger to tragedy. Through this work, you can continue your brother's legacy 
and you have the lived experience that so many in the Latino community have experienced this year. I am here today because of the great compassion, support, and belief that President Biden and SBA Administrator Isabella Guzman had in me to lead our strategy on ensuring that we not only meet our 23% business goal, but that we increase 8A business contracting significantly, as well as all the other socioeconomic programs. As you heard from Chairwoman Nidia Velasquez, whose team Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you. I think we're dealing with some technical issues there. I know that uh, our uh, associate administrator from the SBA was just on delivering her remarks. I think she's joining again. Uh, thank you so much to each of you for joining us and Bibi for your remarks. If you'd like, what I can do is let you finish your, your thoughts and your very thoughtful and passionate remarks. And We'll try to follow after that with a couple of quick housekeeping items and then pass it along to Rafael. But from the bottom of our hearts, and I think you can probably see in the chat, we're getting a lot of support from our community, from our Latino community for not only the work that you do, but for continuing their legacy. Thank you, Richard. I greatly appreciate it. My apologies, my um, uh, Zoom connection went out and I, it, reminds me of my brother Patrick who for years prior to when Zoom became a, an everyday occurrence he would say let's let's meet on video let's meet on Skype so I feel like my brother is with us here today um, I'm so grateful to you again for having me here and I want to say like the uh, administrator said la ayuda está aquí help is here this president believes in our community and knows the talent that we have here today. And he wants you to be a partner of the federal government, the largest purchaser in the globe, as Representative Nidia Velasquez said. And as I was saying, I just met with her team yesterday who said, let's work closely together to make sure you have the resources you need so we can hit this out of the park. So today, uh, the USHCC has brought an expert to the table, Rafael Marrero, and he is going to lead you through the workshop on how to access opportunity through the federal government. La ayuda está aquí, the opportunity is here. Please partner with us, please reach out to SBA. We have resources uh, available as well in the, in the uh, uh, program um, that the uh, uh, USHCC has uploaded and we're here to work with you. Thank you again for having me here today. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Rafael, and the entire United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Bibi. Thank you so much for your thoughtful remarks. And I think that, you know, I, I can speak for everyone and especially those in the who are joining us virtually, of course, at this legislative summit that, you know, we continue to work under the legacy of Patrick Hidalgo. We continue to work in such an administration that cares so much about empathy and compassion. Uh, which comes all the way from the top and continuing to fuel our energy in that way for the work that we do, each of us here, yourself, Rafael, and everyone here in attendance to make our Latino business community and our Latino community in general a better, uh, you know, better place. You know, we want to increase generational wealth. We want to use entrepreneurship as our main vehicle and, of course, contracting and such to make sure that we create that generational wealth in our community. So. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so, so much, Bibi, for joining us today, for opening our discussion today on contracting, and for your and the administrator support. We, we heard from the SBA administrator, Guzman, earlier this morning as well about the importance of supporting our Latino-owned businesses. So thank you again for joining us. One thing I forgot to mention, um, 
I often have Patrick with me in moments like this. Mm -hmm. And today I'm wearing his scarf. Patrick is with all of us. Thank you so much, Bibi. Thank you. Thank you. On, God, and, bless. God bless. And so what, what we'll do, everyone, is uh, difficult to follow that, but uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Uh, welcome everyone to the How Hispanic-Owned Businesses Can Succeed Through Federal Government Contracting Workshop. Uh, this workshop will run from 1235 to about 135. Uh, as you all have already seen, because we have a lot of buzz and activity going on in the chat box, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to type them up. You should see a Q&A box on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, it'll say you'll be able to type in a question and then click on uh, send a question. And as we go through the presentation that Rafael Marrero will shortly kick off, uh, you know, we'll be reviewing your questions so that at the end, if we have an extra 10 to 15 minutes, uh, we'll be able to do a quick interactive Q&A on the topic of government contracting and, and what we can do, whether it's Rafael Marrero or SBA or us at the USHC, of course, to help continue to provide that uh, access to contracts for our Hispanic-owned businesses. So with that, uh, Rafael, I don't know if you're on, if you can turn on your camera, please, and I'll pass it along to you. Thank you so, so much, Rafael, for the work that you do for helping lead our workshop on contracting, our one and only workshop on contracting. Of course, contra we talk about contracting throughout the Legislative Summit, but this is really supposed to be the key landmark event so that our Hispanic-owned businesses know how to get access to the SBA, how to get access to the DOD, Department of Defense, the largest buying service in the world, et cetera. So, I'll stop talking. Rafael Marrero doesn't need more introductions. So I'll, I'll pass it along to you, Rafa. Thank you. Thank you, Richard, and thank you, Bibi, uh, for your kind words. Uh, Rafael Marrero and Company is a social impact firm. We're actually a Hispanic business enterprise. We're proud members of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And today we're going to deliver La Salsa Secreta del Tío Sam. We're going to deliver a very passionate, uh, very tailored presentation for the needs of the Hispanic businesses in America through the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and start the presentation. Okay, let's see here. Okay. okay. All right, so the title of today's presentation is How Hispanic-Owned Businesses Can Succeed Via Federal Government Contracting. It's been my honor and my privilege to deliver this uh, workshop both remotely now via Zoom uh, for a couple of times due to the pandemic, but also in person in Washington, D.C., and at the National Convention of the United States Hispanic Chamber, where we've touched the lives of thousands of, of Hispanic-owned businesses in the United States during our workshops. Uh, a quick disclaimer, uh, this workshop is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the United States Small Business Administration, the SBA or any government agency, and is provided to you, the audience of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce a Legislative Summit for informational purposes only. Uh, any participation in this workshop is voluntary and any engagement by government personnel is not an indication of or uh, of endorsement of or commitment to purchase from us or any other vendor. And I, I wish to thank BB for her participation and everyone else in our workshop and uh, abrazo from Miami, Florida to her uh, on her words. A little bit of background on, on who I am in the firm. For those of you who don't know me uh, the, and the firm, uh, we bring 35 years of combined experience both in the government and private sector uh, as a former Fortune 500 C-level executive, I've worked for Mostec, the largest Hispanic-owned business in the United States. It's a publicly traded company specializing in infrastructure, telecommunications, and energy. Uh, I've also been a successful military and Department of Defense contractor with a service-disabled veteran-owned small business by the name of Bylight, uh, an award-winning entrepreneur, two-time Inc. 500 honoree. I was once blessed with the Minority Supplier of the Year Award from the 2016 award from the National Minority Supplier Development Council, and recently with Small Business of the Year by the South Florida Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, led by Lily by Lilium. Uh, so we bring to the table a holistic perspective, that of a former procurement officer from the large publicly traded 
publicly traded uh, supply chain enterprise sector as a contractor and also a consultant from a social impact firm. Academically speaking, I bring up an Ivy League background to the table from Cornell and Stanford, and I'm the author, best-selling author in, uh, of La Salsa Secreta del Tío Sam. So without further ado, let's get started. A uh, couple of nice things that some folks throughout the years have said of, uh, of us and the work that we've done. Uh, Lieutenant General Robert J. Donahue said, we are proud to have had Rafael represent us both domestically and abroad and have benefited greatly from his skills as a negotiator and liaison, uh, someone that I learned a lot from, that I worked for and reported to, and uh, have the deepest respect, Lieutenant General Robert J. Donahue of blessed memory. Also, Rear Admiral Tony Watson, stated, Rafael has been an amazing leader, tutor, and all around make it happen person to introduce us to the world of value his company provides to its customer. That Those were the words of Rear Admiral Anthony J. Watson, United States Navy retired. A little bit about La Salsa Secreta. Some have called it a guide for federal mana, Diario Las Americas, and also Negocios Now. One of our media partners for the USHCC said, La Salsa Secreta is a GPS for success in government contracts. For those of you who have not had the chance to get La Salsa Secreta, I, I strongly urge you to go to Amazon.com and order a copy and pick up a copy today. Uh, support small businesses in America because it's locally printed and delivered by a small business. So it's here in America and it's in Spanish. It's the, actually the first government contra contracting handbook written in Spanish for the Hispanic community. Okay, let's get into the recipes for success of La Salsa Secreta. So. The first question that we all need to ask ourselves is, why do business with Uncle Sam? That is a very, very important question that we need to ask ourselves. We need to understand, is this for me? Is this for my firm? And that's one of the fundamental questions here. So first and foremost, uh, you should know that Uncle Sam, uh, the United States federal government, is actually the world's richest client. Uh, it has an annual budget of about $4.11 trillion. Uh, supports approximately, uh, de delivers services via approximately 2.1 million employees. And there are approximately $550 billion in contracts awarded annually through 4.5 million contracts and another $500 billion in grants of all kinds. Uh, so there's a significant amount of expenditures on the part of the federal government. And just to put it in perspective for you, the federal government's expenditures amount for approximately 25%, 25% of the United States gr uh, gr uh, gross domestic product. Uh, there are approximately 28 million businesses in America and about those yet only 545,000 are active in SAM. And get this, about 60,000 of those are actually Hispanic owned. So I've made it my mission in life and my, my uh, my big, uh, my big goal to get more Hispanic owned businesses to do business with the United States federal government and to become federal contractors. And throughout the years, we've touched the lives of many businesses that not only have done business with the federal government, but have also scaled their businesses and have grown exponentially thanks to our advice and professional services. Um, there's about $47 billion awarded under a special category where Everyone could compete, but only one bid or offer was received. And get this, another interesting stat is about $20 billion a year are spent via P cards, via procurement cards or credit cards. So those are interesting facts that help point you in the direction of really sizing up the federal government and the opportunity that is before us. So let's talk about that opportunity. Uh, there are many, many opportunities for Hispanic owned businesses. And as you, uh, as you may have heard, the United States government has this policy per the Small Business Act to allow all small businesses the maximum practicable opportunity to participate by providing their goods and services to the government. These are not aspirational goals. Uh, these are actually, sorry, uh, jumping ahead here, not aspirational goal, it's actually the law. And that's why there are departments in the United States federal government that ensure that agencies are meeting their regulatory uh, goals of participation for small disadvantaged businesses, women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, and hub zone-owned businesses, okay? Uh, so there are approximately, according to stats that I've seen from the United States federal government and from the United States 
uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. There are approximately 5 million Hispanic owned businesses in America. And as I pointed to at the very beginning of our presentation, only about 60,000 Hispanic owned businesses are registered in SAM to do business with the world's richest client. To which I say, if we're not sitting at the table, then we are definitely on the menu. And it's time to change that equation by having more Hispanic owned businesses participate in these programs that are intended to help small disadvantaged businesses. So let's, uh, for example, IT is one of the areas where there is a lot of opportunity for Hispanic owned businesses. You're looking at a significant amount of dollars that are spent every year, about 57.4 billion, about 264,000 contracts with an average contract size of $218,000 each. So for those of you in the IT world, please consider doing business with Uncle Sam. A lot of IT opportunities. It's a high demand area, especially in cybersecurity. Training and development is another area where I see a lot of distinguished Hispanic owned, women owned businesses offering training. And I've met quite a few Latinas that offer training. And there's a significant spend on the part of the United States federal government approximately $6.5 billion, according to FPDS and, and federal uh, contracting databases. So approximately 38,600 contracts with an average contract size of about $169,000 each. Training and development is a big area where Latinos can make an impact. And also there are great contractual opportunities for small Hispanic owned businesses. Management consulting is another big area, about $16.1 billion in different types of opportunities, approximately 68,000 contracts with an average contract size of about $236,000. So another significant area. And I know from my dealings with the United States Hispanic Chamber that there are in fact great many, a gr great several uh, companies dedicated to offering management consulting uh, services in the Hispanic community at large. Another great area, and this is where many people also are surprised when I tell them, but there, are, there is a significant opportunity in marketing, public relations, and advertising. Clearly, the United States federal government doesn't call it marketing, calls it outreach, but there are outreach programs in the different government agencies where these uh, programs are, are communicated, requirements are, are communicated to the community, and the, there is a public information office and different programs to communicate the different benefits available to the population and the different programs that are being developed, as well as when there's new construction underway. For example, in the Department of, the, of Transportation, these programs have public announcements on television, radio, and in multiple languages to reach the community. If you're in a marketing, public relations, or advertising Hispanic-owned business, you should seriously consider doing business with Uncle Sam because there are multiple contracts available to client to, to firms such as yours. Another great area of impact where you can have a significant opportunity as a Hispanic owned business is facilities maintenance. The United States has the, uh, uh, the General Services Administration has uh, the, the Public Building Service, the PBS, and it is perhaps the largest uh, property management organization in the United States, managing millions of square feet of public space and office space for federal employees and facilities. All of these facilities require the assistance, the service of a provider such as you, someone to help the flooring, to help with the HVAC, electricity, to help with all of the goods and services that help maintain our facilities in proper shape in order to serve the public. So significant amount of dollars spent in, in uh, facilities maintenance, almost $30 billion. Average contract size, $357,000. Another great area of impact is the construction trades. Okay, so uh, $8.9 billion, 148,000 contracts, according to our research, with an average contract size of about $60,000. Now, these are the construction trades. So there's also the construction side of the house which accounts for one a big chunk of the federal budget. Every year, the United States federal government does a lot of infrastructure upgrades through several of its depend, uh, departments, Naval Facilities Command, Public Building Service, et cetera, et cetera, the US Army Corps of Engineers. So $45 billion in construction opportunities 
uh, there must be some type of work your construction, your Hispanic owned small business may be qualified to offer Uncle Sam. Medical equipment, durable medical, durable medical equipment, DME and others is another high impact area. I know for a fact that if you, if you walk down the street in the Hispanic community of any city in America, you will find a small medical supply facility or a shop owned by a mom and pop, a Hispanic owned small business. Well, guess what? There are $16.8 billion acquired through the different agencies, such as Veterans Affairs, the hospitals, Centers for Disease Control, the US Department of Health, 745,000 uh, contracts. And with an average contract size of about $22,500, there is opportunity, gente. There's a lot of opportunity out there. Medical staffing is another uh, area of opportunity. And I know this because my daughter's a nurse. Uh, so medical staffing is definitely a high impact area. $3.5 billion, 12,000 contracts, average contract size of about 286,000. I personally know of several women owned, minority owned firms in the state of Florida that specialize in medical staffing, spe specifically in the South Florida area. And they're doing quite well for themselves. Logistics and transportation is another significant area, another significant area. And I know for a fact that because I live in Miami and Miami is the, uh, the jumping off point to Latin America and the point of entry for a lot of goods, that opportunity, there's a lot of opportunity in logistics and transportation, $5.8 billion, thousands of contracts. And by the way, there are multiple agencies you could be doing work with to provide services on, on the logistics and transportation side, among them, Defense Logistics Agency, just, in, just and, and for example, not just the Department of Transportation, but the Army Material Command and others that provide services where goods are transported from point A to point B, your firm may be able to provide transportation support and also logistics expertise on the management consulting side to optimize processes to ensure that goods are delivered in a timely fashion. Well, as you can see, there are multiple opportunities. In the next 365 days, the United States federal government will invest approximately $550 billion. Uh, it's go time. Uh, to, so there's a significant amount of dollars that are being spent in the next year. It is incumbent upon you as a Hispanic owned business to seize the day and jump on this significant opportunity to grow your business and to participate in these social economic programs that organizations such as the SBA has for small Hispanic owned businesses like yourselves. So let's talk about what are some of the key ingredients and recipes for success in federal government contracting. Let's talk about La Salsa Secreta and some of the secret sauce ingredients. Here's what we've learned from empirical research and by doing work and consulting throughout the years with clients that have grown and scaled their businesses. Number one, uh, you want to mitigate your risk, mitigate risk for yourself and your rich new client. It's important to assess your internal situation. The federal government is federal government contracting right for me? That's the question you have to ask yourself. And we offer a 25 point self assessment as a small business where you can look at yourself and look at key areas so that you can build a corrective action, preventative action, a Kappa plan of attack so that you can improve upon your current situation and then uh, launch your efforts successfully in the federal government. Uh, the government is very risk averse, okay? It's a very rich uh, client, it has many needs, but please do understand that they have very high standards. And it's not just about being part of an ethnic group or being a specific gender, you also have to deliver uh, a quality product or service on time, on budget, and without accidents in the case of construction. So the first thing you need to do is register your entity and SAM, and SAM in, the new, in the new portal and show up strong. Have uh, your DUNS number ready, your SAM registration, and your dynamic small business search profile, which is your SBA profile, show up strong to give a lasting positive first impression on a potential partner, on a potential buyer in the federal government, or even a prime contractor looking to team up with someone like you. 
The other thing I think is very important is to create a winning strategy. You need to create a winning strategy by setting smart goals. I'm a big believer in Six Sigma, so here it goes. The S for specific. You need to have specific goals. You need to have M for measurable. You have to have measurable goals. So in other words, I wanna lose weight. That's, that's an aspirational goal. Now, if you say I need to lose 50 pounds over the course of one year, that's a measurable and specific goal and then achievable because it's tied to a time frame and realistic and time bound. So A for achievable, R for realistic and T for time bound that would be a smart goal where you say, I'm going to lose 50 pounds over the course of one year by eating so many calories, by exercising so many minutes, by staying away from candy, by staying away from sweets, by staying away from pastelitos, all the good stuff that we Hispanics love to eat, right? So by measuring that, arroz con pollo, all the other things, by measuring that and controlling that, then I'm going to achieve my realistic goal of losing this weight. That's an example of a realistic or a smart goal. Now, the third point I'm going to recommend today, and this is based on empirical uh, evidence and, and, and feedback that we've received, start with micro consulting. Start with micro purchases. There are goods and value and, and goods valued under $10,000. Well, the, the micro purchase threshold has been uh, augmented to $10,000. So that's a great opportunity for you to deliver a, a good or a service or a product or a service under $10,000 to start wetting your feet, so to speak. The other thing is simplified acquisitions are a great, a great neighborhood up to $250,000. And typically the competition is not as fierce as in larger contracts. So I would say start small, start with micro consulting, start with micro purchases, and then move on to simplified acquisitions because you need to kick the tires on the standard forms that the government needs and then become uh, one with those forms and understand how to transact with the United States government and its agencies. Number four, okay? I want you to identify your top five agencies and clients, okay? Time is very limited. Resources are very few and far between, especially for Hispanic owned businesses during the pandemic. So it's important that you work with your top five federal agencies. In other words, who are the people, who are the agencies of the 93 major federal agencies and 1,175 sub agencies and 200,000 potential buyers out there? Who out there, who are the top five? Who are the top five departments or agencies that are buying my goods and services, okay? You wanna have a laser focused, narrow approach to, to yield better results when you're, when you're dealing with the federal government because limited resources, you wanna concentrate your troops in one front and attack, attack, attack until you get results, okay? The other thing is, please, by all means, pursue SBA certifications, okay? Strongly urge you because there are federal mandates for participation of certain socioeconomic categories. And when the contracting office looks for looks to fit a goal to meet a goal they go down the pecking order and down their list and you know if you have your your firm certified as a small disadvantaged business as an 8a firm you're going to be at the very top of the list um as a small disadvantaged business you know 8a firms uh the goal there is about five percent of the 23 percent goaling for small businesses um and last year uh 8a firms and throughout the last several years 8a firms have done quite well for themselves the women-owned small business, another 5%. There are significant opportunities for Latinas who have uh, their women-owned small business certification. Great credential to have. Now, if you also meet the requirements for the economically disadvantaged women-owned small business, which is uh, a, a, a program developed originally on under the Obama administration, very similar to the 8A program, but intended for women, and if you meet the socioeconomic criteria for this program, you too can get sole source contracts and set aside opportunities that are available only to women that fit these categories in specific NAICS codes where women are, are underrepresented uh, socioeconomically, okay? Now, another great opportunity where the, where the government is trying to meet its goals again is hub zones. 
Hub zones are historically underutilized business zones, very similar to empowerment zones, very similar, and some of them actually overlap, but there's a map that the SBA has to determine whether or not you are you're actually located, your main location is in a hub zone. And if 35% of your staff, including yourself, if you're a small business, uh, live in a designated, a federally designated hub zone, this could be tremendous opportunity for you. So this is one hot topic to keep in your hip pocket. Keep it on, on keep it in mind. And also for those who served in the military and have a service connected disability, there's a service disabled veteran owned small business and the veteran owned small business certification. Veterans qualify for 3% of all federal contracting dollars. That's the goal. Hub zones, another 3%. Um, with hub zones, again, great opportunities. EDWOSB and WOSB for economically disadvantaged women owned small business and women owned small businesses qualify for 5% goal. And then 8A is a small disadvantaged business, another 5%. So please keep this in mind. Remember, you can compete as a prime as a Hispanic owned business. If you have what it takes, you can also work as a subcontractor because there are federal guidelines to help the prime contractors must uh, award 33.7% of all federal contracts, except in some cases for construction, over $700,000 must be awarded to, to small businesses. So if they have, let's say, a $1 million contract, just to use a hypothetical example, $337,000 of that would have to be dedicated to small businesses subcontract as part of their subcontracting goals uh, with as part of that contract, just to give you an example. All right, now another very important point is cultivating relationships. Now, it's important to understand that just because you have a certification, you are not going to get a contract. In fact, I always tell people that certifications are like a great gym membership. So you now belong to a very exclusive club of federal contractors who have been vetted, who have been approved, and are part of this unique gym, right? But you gotta put, go in and put in the work. You gotta go out there and mingle. You gotta knock on doors, good old fashioned elbow grease. And you have to be good at what you do. So the first 18 months, I always say with your top five clients, focus on teaming with primes. Align your strategy so that you identify those top five government agencies and then go get registered Go get, uh, become an approved sub subcontractor and get on teams with the primes that serve those five agencies or those five clients that you're trying to position or align with. That's a very good method and a very focused way of using your, your, your resources. From 18 to 24 months, you can then concentrate on pursuing opportunities as a prime. That's a great structured, measured approach. It's not firing on all eight from, from the moment you hit, you, you, you come out of the gate, but it's a great way to ensure, uh, or a, a greater way to ensure that you are successful by having a structured measured approach. Okay. So dedicate resources. It's important to market your company and get in front of key decision makers. Now, after you've been, and again, this is, you're going to get bombarded by people who are going to say, who are out there offering services say get, get a gsa schedule get a gsa schedule i say time out okay first and foremost uh the gsa schedules are very selective they're very exclusive they're not easy to attain and uh there are approximately 40 gsa categories uh the government spends about 34 billion dollars a year via this contracting these contracting vehicles think of a gsa schedule as a master services agreement that you have in place. You've been vetted by the United States General Services Administration, which is you can consider like the contract shop of the United States government. And that master contract can be or may be used across multiple uh, federal agencies and in some instances, even state agencies, okay? Having a GSA schedule does not guarantee that you will get a contract with the federal government. Okay, but it does ensure that you are contract ready, that your rates are pretty much specified, that your background has been vetted, that your financials have been looked at and examined carefully 
by the federal government, which means that you're one step closer to landing an opportunity and you are able to negotiate on better terms with a selected, with a down selected group of people. That's what having a GSA schedule means. The other thing is it's very good because you can have them for up to 20 years, five years stints and renegotiate. So having a, a GSA schedule is a great tool. It's a great way to get ahead, but it does not mean you're gonna have a guarantee of getting a contract, okay? Because some agencies prefer to use a blanket purchase agreement, a BPA. Others have their own indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity. So they have their own MSA, their own master services agreement that they prefer to use, not necessarily a GSA schedule. So please keep that in mind. I recommend you wait two to three years after you've been contracting with the federal government, then consider getting a GSA schedule. Number eight, okay, it's important for you to harness the power of strategic alliances, all right, to scale your business. Um, the SBA has multiple programs, very, very good ones. You know, one of the things we talked about at Tuck in the Growing the Minority Scale to Business program was there are three ways to grow your Hispanic business, right? One of them is organically, which is slow. slow. The other one is through mergers and acquisitions. And then the third, which requires less capital outlay, less cash outlay, but more skill and patience is via strategic alliances. Now, the SBA has very, and the government has very specific rules on how to do business when you're working with others. So you have to follow the rules and play by the rules, but they strongly encourage you to join and form teams with large and small primes. One of, the, one of these ways to do this is via the all small mentor protege program. Great program. We've successfully helped several companies enter into all small mentor protege program agreements with other firms that they are now doing business with at, with the federal government. And it works very, very well when you have the right partner to work with and you have a good solid business plan to go along with that mentor protege agreement. Because remember, uh, it's only as good as the people you work with and only as good as the plan you have in place, okay? So once you land an opportunity uh, and you've identified an opportunity and you have a teaming agreement and a mentor protege agreement, and then you, can, you may wanna consider forming a opportunity specific joint venture, which may be required by the United States government, depending on the type of opportunity that you're going after, okay? Now, it's important that you gather competitive open source market intelligence. So look up your competitors, use the existing federal government data systems. You can look at acquisition.gov, usaspending.gov, and now fpds.gov has been migrated into the new beta.sam.gov, so all of the functionality is there, but you, you know where I'm going. There is open data out there. There's no reason why you should be paying for expensive uh, database systems to access this information. If you become good and adept at navigating these data systems and pulling reports and seeing who your competitors are, chances are with a couple of hours of hard work, you could identify your top five agencies. You could, you could cross-reference uh, public information records and figure out who's buying what your company sells, who they're buying from now and how much they're buying and when they're buying and what those contracts are and who your competitors are, right? Because situational awareness is everything. You need to have a good, clear lay of the land in order to compete effectively in this market. One of the things that I highly, highly recommend is implementing a bid, no bid review process. I have this great tool in Excel that we use. And unless we score a very specific percentage that is above 75% favorable results, that's when we consider whether or not we should be investing our dollars and our time and our effort in participating in, the, in going after a specific capture opportunity. Remember, never ever bid cold. It's not about seeing an RFX, an RFP, an RFQ. If it hits and you never knew about it before, chances are you're late to the dance, okay? So you need to get involved early on in the process and culturally start embracing the process so that you start communicating your value proposition, the uh, briefings, have good, strong uh, materials, which we're gonna cover in a few minutes and never ever start, never ever bid cold, All right? 
One of the things I strongly and highly urge you to do is to get ahead of the RFP, okay? Don't wait till the RFP is published. There are ways to ethically, and I wanna underscore this, ethically influence the client's acquisition strategy, okay? Help them understand what you bring to the table. Let's say that you are a service disabled veteran or an 8A firm, and they're looking for an 8A firm to fulfill video production work, just to give you an example. Well, bring your, your A game to the table, show them you've got the right stuff, show them that you've got past performance. You may have just started in the federal government, but you have great past performance in the private sector, and you can document this with, with names of contracts, you have good stellar references and samples of your work, that ought to count for something, okay? Now, get ahead of the RFP, in, in ethically influence the client's acquisition strategy. Remember, federal clients buy from people they know, like, and trust. Very, very important. Okay, another great recommendation that I, that I as part of my Salsa Secreta is use agency forecasting, okay? Leverage agency-specific forecasting data Hispanic firms should make early contact with federal procurement officers on larger contracts. And if you look at, for example, this, this one PDF that I use as an example from United States Transportation Command from their acquisition procurement forecast for specific NAICS code, it will give you a summary of the opportunity. It will give you the type of projected value. So this opportunity is from one to $5 million, the anticipated release date for the RFP, whether or not there's a, uh, the contract type, firm fixed pro, uh, price, that tells you that there's more risk involved. You need to have a good risk mitigation strategy in place for that. And then is there an incumbent? Are you competing against someone that's already in place, entrenched? If so, how is their performance? Is there good public data available as part of their CPARs, their public, you know, their ratings on, on how well they've performed? Because from this information, you can articulate a good strategy to ethically go after that business and compete for. Who knows? You may be actually able to work with them as a subcontractor first to open the doors there. All right. It is important. It is important, just like when you go into a Hispanic home, home to learn your, your, your host's language, right? So when you go to a Hispanic family home, most likely you're gonna speak a little Spanish, right? So when you speak with the government, you need to have your acronyms in place. You need to understand things such as LPTA, lowest price technically acceptable, COTAR, contracting officer, technical representative, KO, the, the contracting officer, it's not a knockout like in boxing, IDIQ, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity and government-wide acquisition contract for GWAC. And just like this, there are scores of this new government lingo that I call FedGov or Governees. And so I say to you, habla FedGov, it's very important that you speak FedGov when you're doing business with Uncle Sam. Be patient and selective, number 14, okay? You can't rush good flavor or sabor, you may ruin the salsa. You know, just like when you're cooking something from scratch, you may, turn up the heat, but if you but if you rush to cook something, it's not gonna taste quite the same, okay? Those of you who are out there who are cooks or chefs know what I'm talking about. You can't rush a good tamal, you can't rush a good salsa. If you're cooking something, it's gotta be just right when you're serving it, and that's very important. So using the wrong ingredients may spoil the salsa. Also, there's an 18 to 24 month ramp up process with partners and so you need to be selective and very patient, okay? It's not gonna happen overnight, it's step by step. Doing things the right way, you'll definitely get the right results. Now, it's important, number 15, to build a strong team. You're gonna need someone in-house uh, or, or externally, maybe someone you can partner with to help you with business development. You're gonna need help with branding. You're gonna need help with contracts management, okay? Someone in-house needs to know their contracts and program management and accounting. Okay, those are the five key areas where you really need expertise. So you really need, need to think who you're going to assign those, those uh, roles to internally, or if you need to go outside and find a good partner to help you augment your team or round it out. Okay, remember, register with large prime contractors. They have a 33.7% subcontracting goal. 
Look at the Raytheons of the world, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, Khaki, Science Applications International Corporation, et cetera, et cetera. These are the big fish. You need to go after them and you need to become one with them to become a subcontractor and registered and qualified, pre-qualified in their portals and to get in front of them to show them your capabilities. Last but not least, okay, number 17, brand differently. This is a must, okay? There are different components in your new brand, your federal brand, where you need to pay attention because everything changes. Everything you may have done in the private sector, you need to redesign and kind of tweak to meet the needs, the communication needs and protocols of the federal government. And I know this to be the case because we've worked with scores of clients in helping them rebrand their companies to, to better communicate their value proposition. Okay, business cards, professional email accounts, okay? You gotta, get, you gotta let go of that personal Gmail account, okay? No inappropriate titles, of course, you know, uh, you, you gotta keep it professional and clean. Capability statements addressing the six C's of government contracting. A government tab on your website, if not altogether a government-centric website, a video capability statement. They're becoming a new thing now. Check them out. And a capabilities briefing template in addition to uh, emails focused for your buyers. Your business cards are gonna look very, very different from everything you've seen in the government sector. I mean, in the private sector. For example, Miguel Lopez Jr. does asphalt, right? So he does asphalt pavement site work. He's an 8A certified firm. Here's that. And then here are the NAICS codes, okay? The primary and commonly served, his contracting vehicles. And because he's a construction firm, he needs professional licenses and certifications. And those are spelled out right here. Your business, your business card becomes like a miniature capability statement. And please note, always have your DUNS number and your cage code, okay? Typically double-sided and never ever get glossy paper, matte paper, please, so that folks can write comments on them whenever you meet them, okay? Your capability statement is another one. Your capability statement is your single most important document. It's your corporate resume. Without a contractor resume, you're not gonna, it's that first impression, like asking someone to come to a job interview without a resume, it's not gonna happen. They should be letter size, eight and a half by 11, double-sided, and you need to capture the six C's, eight and a half by 11, please. And here, please listen to this. The file size must not ever exceed one megabyte. Please, it'll get caught in federal IT systems, okay? Don't spam them to death and don't send them big files. Make sure it's your company name dot capability resume, uh, capability statement dot PDF. Use that naming convention, include a very brief capabilities narrative, similar to what you have in DSBS. Your codes, meaning your names codes, DUNS number, cage code, your PSC codes, your contracts, if you have any, your customers, names of customers that you're currently serving. If you have any contracts with the federal government, such as a GSA schedule or an IDIQ, very important to have that, as well as your core competencies. And most importantly, how do they get in touch with you? Okay, you would be amazed. How many people leave that very, very important piece of information out of their capability statement? Government contractor website, uh, check out when you can. The Set Rock Group, they have a beautiful landing page. There are multiple companies that we've worked with to help them rebrand themselves. Notice that here, there's a government tab right there, okay? And have a very clear uh, delineated structure so that government contracting folks can just land on the page and find what they're looking for, okay? Make it easy for them to do business with you. All right, the capabilities briefing. So you've gotten, you've caught their attention. They wanna bring you in. What is a capabilities briefing? It's a meeting with government agencies, buyers. It's typically set up by the small business specialist, okay? Or your business opportunity specialist who knows of something in the SBA. And it's typically with program managers of the agency which you're interested in selling your product or service to. It will comprise of multiple uh, key agency personnel. It's typically 20 to 30 minutes long, okay? Use a PowerPoint presentation and send an ad bond courtesy copy to get them involved and to get any important feedback on hot topics that may be of interest to them that you may not be aware of, okay? Very important. And to make sure that you follow due process. 
A contractor capabilities video is becoming a new thing now. It's typically a 150 word script and a, the video does not go above 1.5 to two minutes long. It's basically tells a story in the format of video. Video is a very attractive medium and it's a great way to stand out from a whole bunch of people who get a uh, paper all day long. And it's a, a good way to catch their attention. You could send it to them on a CD-ROM or a USB drive. You can also send them a link to your website, et cetera. Okay. Now, moment you've been waiting for, here's an example how someone like you, an HPE Hispanic Business Enterprise by the name of IT Data Solutions, my friend Abel Herrera, who went with me to the United States Hispanic, actually the legislative summit coming up on three years now and how he, yeah, I think it's three years ago, how we went to the, uh, he went to the legislative summit with me and how his participation with the, with the USHCC transformed this company, right? Here's Abel Herrera, looks just like Andy Garcia, right? We, that's how we kid around. So Abel Herrera is the CEO of IT Data Solutions. His firm was established in 2005, Hispanic owned business. Core offerings are IT services, great customer relationships, very, very likable individual. 8A MBE certified firm. He's also a, a part of the NMSDC and part of its input committee. Very, very vocal, very uh, proactive individual and a great personality. Uh, he contacted our firm in February, 2018, just before the legislative summit. He joined us in March of 2018. So yes, it was three years ago. And we attended the 2018 United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce events, both the legislative summit and the matchmaking events in DC and the annual convention in Philly. Okay, here's what happened. Okay, we started working with Abel. We rebranded his, his company to make his uh, materials appropriate to the federal market. That included photography, the website, business cards, capability statements, all of his collateral to go to trade shows, his roll-up banners. And we developed the correct, we helped them develop the correct approach for government contracting. We cultivated multiple relationships, thanks to, to the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So I wanna give a big shout out to Ramiro Cavazos and everyone there for a great job. and. Uh, as a result of that, uh, Abel met several people at the Federal Reserve Board, NASA, and the U.S. Navy. Uh, the relationship building process started there. Abel won his first multi-million dollar, multi-year federal contract. It was an IDIQ in less than a year, and it was by invitation with the Federal Reserve Board for IT services. So this is an example, uh, and he has closed business on this opportunity. So this is an example of how you as a Hispanic business enterprise and small business can actually leverage the great services that the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce offers companies such as yours when you become a member, okay? Now, these are some of our success stories. In 2019, we're very, very proud and there are several names that are not here, but just to give you an idea, Tony Noah, 437% growth, Inc. 5,000 honoree, also a member of the United States Hispanic Chamber, Santi Fernandez of Vortec Utilities. They're actually in the Inc. 500, and they're among the 300 fastest growing privately held firms in America. Hispanic owned firms from South Florida. Claimer is a Cuban refugee. He came to the United States on a raft when he was a teenager. He came on a raft. Today, he's a CEO and president of one of the most successful telecom construction firms in the United States and a proud member of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Last but not least, Miguel Lopez Jr., who we call the king of asf asphalt. He does asphalt pavement, a great, great person, big supporter of the USHCC, and has been to several of its events in Washington and in other cities, Nuevo Mexico, et cetera. So these are some of the people that we've worked with that we've helped cultivate throughout the years that are Hispanic business enterprises that have succeeded via federal government contracting and also state and local contracting and with the large private sector, such as Claimer, we helped them negotiate multi-million dollar contract with Crown Castle. Today, they're, they're growing exponentially. They're, they started at about $700,000 a year in revenues, and right now they're, they're in the $20 million range, so in about three years. That's so significant growth for small Hispanic-owned small business. Okay. Now, uh, so uh, if you have any questions, Richard, I think we're uh, at about that time. 
Thank you so much, Rafael, for that excellent presentation on how to get our Hispanic-owned businesses into the federal marketplace. Speaking, what was it, governees? Governees. Uh, governees, speaking, speaking the language of our federal government administration. And so thank you to everyone who's been submitting comments and questions and, and thoughts through the Q&A chat. We do have a couple of questions, Rafael, at the time that we have remaining. We'll try to make it as brief as possible. We'll start yeah. off with Diana Flores who asks, so small business certifications are necessary to compete. Uh, how can Hispanic businesses be educated about certifications and where can they get resources as to how to get uh, certified? Sure, so, the, so there's several options. Number one, the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Diana, has, uh, has, been, has multiple uh, uh, matchmaking events, has multiple webinars such as this one to educate Hispanic owned businesses uh, Hispanic owned small businesses about the, about the different features and benefits of these government contracting programs. You can also contact the United States Small Business Administration. Uh, we have, uh, the, the chamber has a, a close working relationship with the Small Business Administration for further guidance to leverage the, the free support that you can get through the Small Business Administration. There are multiple offices that are tailored for women and also resources online on sba.gov. We also offer a free consultation, Richard, to all USHCC members to get to go through that 25 point checklist that we, we typically do like an assessment at the very beginning that helps them baseline where they are to then launch a, a uh, an appropriate program to to become certified and, and develop a good plan of attack. Thanks, Rafael. Our next question is from Orlando Rivera. He asks, how do we find opportunities specific to our industry? He's in real estate brokerage, okay. and he's wondering if he's not looking in the right places. So that's a very good question. And the first and foremost is you need to have your, your NAICS codes clearly defined, your North American industrial classification system codes clearly defined, and also your product supply codes, your PSC codes, because uh, government buyers reference those codes when they're looking for resources such as your firm, okay? When they're looking for vendors and when they when they have a service or a product that they need to buy. So number one, uh, I strongly urge you to, to, uh, to go ahead and schedule a free consultation. We need to look at your, your SAM profile. We need to look at your DSPS profile. We also need to look at, you know, see to make sure that your NAICS codes are aligned. You, you may also wanna visit NAICS.com to make sure that your offerings are clearly aligned with your description. So step number one is I typically like to look at the SAM registration because believe it or not, it's like an X-ray, right? And it tells you exactly where we are. And from there, we can make several recommendations just by looking at a, a SAM registration. Thanks, Rafael. Uh, next, uh, Leti Velez asks, how can we get access and authentic support for programs in the Chicago area? Maybe Rafael, you know of local resources there, but many informative communications are too difficult for many, and that help is needed hands-on. So as a consultant, she's wondering how to, how can she get connected with support in the Chicago area or at the local level? Well, I know that the SBA uh, has offices uh, in every major region, uh, and there are women's business development centers. There's uh, different center. There's a procurement technical assistance center. So there's different levels of tiered support that the SBA offers. Uh, if you'd like, you can feel free to email me at rafael at rafaelmarrero.com. And I will be very happy to help point you in the right direction to make sure that you get the information that you need, or at least have a better understanding of where to find the information. Thank you, Rafael. And Alfonso Ribot, who is a chamber leader from Metro Savannah, Georgia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And <clears throat> Several others have asked, is this presentation available for review and also is it available in Spanish? So the good news is uh, there's, so you know, I, I do a lot of work, Richard, in Spanish, right? Spanish language, media, I'm on the news a lot in Spanish and my workshops are also in Spanish. This is actually the, the one language, this is the one English language webinar that I do. The majority of them are actually in Spanish and Espanol. So, you're more than welcome to email us. I will send you a link to our upcoming free webinars. They're public service, free webinars in Spanish. Um, you will love it. And then also you can get La Salsa Secreta del Tío Sam is actually in Spanish, okay? Um, there's also like BB saying the Small Business Development Centers by zip code. 
That's another way of, of locating the SBDCs, which are funded by the SBA. Thank you, Rafael. Well, I think with that, um, we are a little bit over time. So if it's fine with you and Vivi, Rafael, we can tie it up there. I wanted to take a moment to offer any final closing remarks. Maybe, Rafael, if you had anything to share, or Vivi, I know that you're on. If you wanted to turn on your camera and kind of share any brief remarks at the end on behalf of SBA, we're just happy to have this opportunity to come together with our national audience of Hispanic businesses on this important topic of, co of contracting. And I apologize, I live next to the Potomac River and it seems like every time we talk, there's a helicopter passing on top. So I'll stop talking and maybe Vivi, ladies first, and then Rafael can close this out. I know the feeling. I'm here in Maryland and we, we periodically have, have helicopters go by and uh, everything goes haywire. Uh, Thank you again for having us today. And this was an excellent presentation, Rafael, real, a lot of rich information. And so um, the support is here. It's well-funded. We have our small business development centers, women business centers. You can look, uh, look them up on the SBA website. And then of course there are um, experts like Rafael and others around the country. But more than anything, um, the president has indicated he wants to triple the small disadvantaged business goal over the next five years. So now is the opportunity and we look forward uh, to partnering with you. It's an honor to uh, participate uh, in this event. I thank you so much for everything you've done and everything you'll continue to do for the Hispanic home small businesses and uh, as a Hispanic business enterprise, HPE, and member of the USHCC, I'm thrilled to work with you and your team and hopefully to continue the mission that we've embarked upon for many, many years. Uh, when I left MassTech and started my own vendor management consulting firm, which is Rafael Marrero and Company, I took it upon myself to develop a social impact firm. And we've been steadfast supporting the mission of the USHCC. We wish to continue that and to work with you closer in the SBA. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, Vivi. Thank you, Rafael. And thank you to everyone for joining us. If you have any questions or follow-up, please feel free to send us a quick email. Rafael shared his contact info already. And I know, Vivi, you know, we can certainly help connect any of our attendees with the SBA, the Small Business Administration. My name again is Richard Garcia. I'm Chief of Staff. I can be reached at rgarcia at ushcc.com. And I'll be sure to connect with everyone offline with everyone that sent additional questions and thoughts. So thanks again to everyone. Saludos a todos. And Let's keep on going with the rest of our legislative summit programming. Thanks again, Rafael. Adios. Gracias. Adios.